Hey everybody, welcome to the real United States and welcome to the great state of Michigan. We are here just outside of the village of Hersey. Now, make sure you heard that right. It's Hersey, not Hershey. Uh, Hershey's in Pennsylvania. <laughs> and we've been there and did an episode there. This is Hersey. And we are here on a bridge over the Muskegon River. Now, in a recent episode, we were in Queen Anne's County in Maryland, and we were talking about how things were named and how that process changed from the early colonial days of naming things for old world people or features or places. And then as the westward expansion happened, starting to name them for more American icons, generals, politicians, things like that. Well, it was brought to my attention by my niece uh, that in many of the north central states, a lot of things are actually named uh, more generically or possibly for Native American words or names for them. Uh, for example, not too many miles from where we're standing here in, in west central Michigan, uh, is a lake, which is simply called Blue Lake. <laughs> and uh, here in the state of Michigan, uh, up in the Great Lakes, there is an island simply called Round Island. So sometimes things are just named because that's kind of what it looks like. Uh, but here in Michigan, a lot of times things were named for either their Native American names or sometimes the things were named by the French, who were the, some of the first explorers in this area. Whence we have some very French or quasi-French sounding names, such as Mackinac, which you can always tell somebody is from, not from here, they pronounce it Mackinac. It's Mackinac. And uh, you know, Gratiot. Even Detroit, if you look at the way it's spelled, doesn't, eh, you know. <laughs> but many things were named by the French. But I digress. I want to get back to the fact that many of the things were named with Native American names. And sometimes they were renamed and then reverted to the Native American name, which we'll get to in a future episode. But for right now, I want to talk about Muskegon. The Muskegon River flows for about 216 miles, generally southwesterly, across west central Michigan. You want to talk about an unimaginative bunch. The Muskegon River runs, like I say, 216 miles down into Lake Muskegon in the city of Muskegon, located in Muskegon County in, guess what? You guessed it, Muskegon Township. And then it finally empties out through a small canal into Lake Michigan. Well, Muskegon, as near as I can decipher, is an Ottawa word. Ottawa were the native peoples here at the time of the European influx of, of settlers. And it means um, marshy river or possibly swamp in the Ottawa language. Clearly, the, the native Ottawa people did not view the Muskegon the way we did when our ancestors came here, because the Muskegon River was a major artery through this part of the country, and in fact was a, was a main source of lumber that was supplied downriver to the lumber yards down in the city of Muskegon, which then found their way out onto the, the Big Lake, like Michigan, to points outside in the rest of the country. Um, but again, we're going to get to that in our next episode about the village of Hersey. <clears throat> now, if you look behind me here, this is a very sig historically significant spot we're standing in because you're looking at the convergence of two rivers, the Hersey River and the Muskegon. And while it doesn't look like much today, 
there were millions of board feet of lumber that came through that intersection and floated down this river for the next, you know, couple of hundred miles to be processed into wood. And this was how we actually managed to build so much of this part of the, of the middle part of the country was out of timber that came here from west central Michigan. So I, I don't know that we couldn't have found some additional names, names that might have been, you know, at least gave some variation instead of the river and the city and the lake and the township and the county all being named the same thing. But for better or for worse, that's where he came from, is from the Native American languages that were here. Um, it's a beautiful river. Now today, obviously, you can't run logs down it because uh, you may have seen about mm, five or six years ago in episodes we did, there are two major hydroelectric dams on this river down in Nuego and points downriver um, that were built in the first part of the 20th century. But certainly in the very beginning or middle, actually the middle to late part of the 19th century, there were huge amounts of logs. And to this day, I'm given to understand that you can still, if you canoe down this river, can find submerged logs stuck in the mud from back in the 1870s. And that's, you know, here we are in the 21st century. So uh, an enormous number of logs went down here. Um, Obviously, this land now wouldn't produce that kind of timber, and it's now largely farmland. Uh, West Central Michigan is largely known as orchard country. A lot of fruit is grown here. However, there's a lot of dairy. Um, there's a lot of produce. Um, West Central Michigan, although much further south, um, is home to Gerber baby food. So there's a lot of, you know, butternut squash grown in this part of the country and green beans and things that are processed into baby food uh, down in Fremont, Michigan. So when we cleared off all this land, cut the timber, you know, it, it was being put into production for, for agriculture later on. Anyway, the Muskegon River, this beautiful river, played such a huge role in the development of, well, the whole central part of the nation, certainly in the north central part of the nation. But we'll get to that, like I say, in the next episode when I talk to you about the village of Hersey and the Hersey River. So I hope you enjoyed this short episode about the Muskegon River and the origins of the name Muskegon and how we name things here in the north central United States in, that, in the colonial period. Uh, if you got questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section down below. You want to just stop and say hi. I always enjoy that. Love hearing from everybody. Um, if you're new here, well, I hope you found this at least a little interesting and you'll consider thinking subscribe to come along for the adventure because we've got lots more to show you. And as always, folks, well, thank you for watching.